How's everybody doing? So this is some preliminary napkin drawing sketches just to get the specs out for the back of the brewery warehouse here. Um, well, I can't believe I'm at this stage already. But anyway, so what I do first is, is I get whatever photo reference that I can. So I'm not building this uh, warehouse totally spec because I won't have the room on the layout, right? Because selective compression is in place here. This model is going to be just over 36 inches long, so it's quite large to begin with. But the actual, if I modeled it to scale, it would probably run four feet or so. But then I can't fit in compositionally my other buildings to make the whole scene work, right? That's the whole point of selective compression or artistic uh, license, you know, is, is, is a similar term. Right, that we apply to the prototype. This is very much what the prototype looks like. Like, but this drawing is just not exactly, I've had to compress it this way a bit. Okay. So, but a lot of these details have changed too, but I'm going to put a lot of this detail or GAC on here. Like, um, long ago or a while back, like I would say probably in the early 90s, late 80s, they had two bays here. But, um, like, they're not there now. Like, they're filled in. There's just a service door down here. And, like, this, you know, companies change hands a lot. And these backwoods kind of warehouses are, you know, right of way, you know, like where you never go or we never see. They change all the time. In fact, none of these warehouses are in service anymore. Like, they're not abandoned. They're just out of rail service. Like, I show you photographs of that. But anyway, so I want to capture the spirit of this brewery and I've made it fit and it's shifted way down. So it's the background of the barge slip, right? That's artistic license. When you're looking at, oh, there it is, you know, because if you spread it out all prototypically, there's like, I'd have to have twice the size of room, you know. So I'm going to, this is what I'm going to work with. And then I'm going to spec out on here because I know that there's 20 panels, like 20 tilt up panels, like these warehouses would have been concrete, right? So this is two and three sixteenth. I divided by 20 by uh, whatever the length of this was. And it turned out to be 38 inches. Like this model is 38 inches wide. And so divided by 20 comes out to approximately uh, two and three sixteenths. So these panels, which will be cut from plastic to represent concrete, are going to be two and three sixteenths wide. Which, if you want to know what that is in HO scale, it's about 16 feet. Actually, it's exactly 16 feet. Okay, so now whether these panels were 16 feet, I think they were back then. I don't know. I didn't measure them. Like, there's a point where you got to get on with it and build. But um, it works visually. And so now I know where the doors are going to go. Like, from the photograph. Because if I know there's a, a, a bay door here... Like I know on the photograph, it's one, two, three. Okay, so just say it's this bay door here. So one panel, two panel, three panel. One panel, two panel, three panel. I know there's a bay door in here. Okay. And I can run it in between these two slabs so it doesn't overlap, right? Because they wouldn't do that because it would affect the structure. Okay. Okay, so this is a good opportunity to just uh, mention a couple of things about selective compression because that pertains to the design of any building uh, when it's done like this. Um, so this, like this particular warehouse or actually brewery is what it is, but it's been many different things because buildings change over the years. They take on new ownership and, you know, they evolve. Like I have recent photos of this particular building, but then the ones on Google Earth when you go down doesn't even look like the same building. Doors have been filled in and added and window put in, you know, railings, a rooftop, you know, social area, you know, it just goes on and on like that. So buildings have an evolution, right? And um, this building's changed quite a bit. Now, here's the part of the issue. Like, this is the footprint. Now, in a perfect world, everything works, right? 
but no model railroad is a perfect world. Uh, we like to think it is, and it is if if we're willing to understand that we're going to build it because it's my railroad, la da da la da da, right? And I get that polemic because it's right. You know, it is your railroad at the end of the day. However, when we build from the prototype, the prototype is an excellent guide because it brings a, a discipline to the design that leads to a successful model railroad. And you can see here there's quite a large space devoted to the water because the barge, you can see the drawing of the footprint here, right? And how I revised this later on in the, in the design stage because I wanted a big curve like this. I wanted the whole line to flow like a nice curve. Right? I didn't want any square edges, right? There's a reason for that, for, for not only aesthetics, but it's like a stage, see? Like the diorama concept is a story in the round with a painted backdrop. That's why I apply this philosophy of the diorama to the model railroad, right? See, there's a reason for my madness, isn't there? Okay. This is a model railroad, but it's also a diorama, a functioning one, or a dynamic uh, super diorama with an emphasis on a lot of detail, yet takes a lot to cover, you know, the same amount of square inches than it would if someone took a general approach. And general approaches look good, too. I'm not saying they don't. But that's why a small layout like this feels big because of the, you know, the, the philosophy of the diorama applied in terms of realism and uh, emphasis on details. So details concerning this building is what I just want to mention here then. Like I'll be able to build this building fairly faithful to the prototype because the length is fairly scale, but it is compressed, right? Like lengthwise. It had to be. There are three buildings that I wanted in here because I like to use odd numbers, like I said before. Or I could have built one building, that one down the end. The third one would have been the whole length of this, like in scale. That would be boring, right? So I compressed that one and this one in the center. And then this one's probably the closest to the prototype. So this is the brewery. Is there's actually 20 panels, 16 foot panels. These are HO 16 feet wide, right? And I got 20 in there. So it's pretty close. It's a little bit shorter. But I wanted this reef because this reef is prototypically in the same location as this building. But this whole building wasn't this close to the bar jump. It's another 150 yards down the way. But I compressed it this way to make this scene more rich with the brewery, the shore, the reef, right? Like that's, that's what selective compression is. Like you take the prototype and you take the best of it and you compress it. However, you're going to run into issues though. You're going to lose space on things, right? So you got to make compromises and cheats. Like obviously the space between this bar ship and the shore in the real world, the prototype is, is way, it's like way out here. There's a big area at Beach Street, right? So I had to make that compromise. And then in here, there's an old abandoned track here, or out of service, but it won't be in service anymore. They've actually filled in the loading bays. Actually, all the track, all the way down, is, is out of service. The far building down the far right, or, or the very end, is still in service by rail, but these other ones are, are, are just fenced off and dead. But this main is all still here too with the turnout down there, but further down in reality. So it works, right? So with this building, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do here. I know that it, that, that there's an, maybe enough room for just an out-of-service track. I don't know yet. I might just do ties or rail or 
because I want some heavy growth there like nothing's been going on here. I like the idea of an out of service building. You know, you don't see that modeled very often, right? You know, you don't have to service every building on your layout. I'm more about the character anyway of the railroad uh, that I model than I am about just everything being perfect, you know. So that's what I'm up against. So, but this building here will be a wonderful feature piece because there's a hops uh, waste bin here too that'll fill this area like nicely, like a small one. You know, and uh, it'll it'll be a really nice feature right here. And then there'll be trees further down. But it's this building and getting its, uh, you know, a grid laid out like this, you know, for the tilt up concrete panels and the establishment of the doors and so on. Uh, that'll be fun. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how it comes together. And I think it'll make a really nice weathered off white with a blue trim. You know, it has it's uh, and the doors are blue. Uh, it'll it'll uh, fit the scene nicely, I think.